My name is Simon Ogwal Gienek. I am a forester by profession, having graduated in 2002 from Makere University. I was part of the research team that was working within NARO to pioneer the introduction of these clones in Uganda. After the establishment of trials all over the country, people started growing clones. The clones have been adopted in many parts of the country. However, after planting the trees, the clients run away from us. They don't come back to us to learn how to manage these trees. My plea to tree growers have a professional relationship with a trained forester. If there are mistakes made at the beginning of your plantation, they are very difficult to correct. They are permanent in nature. This morning, I am going to show you the bad way some of you have been pruning your trees. All right? You use pangas and you do it in a pedestrian nature. Just like you see a village path, someone is passing, just cut the way he wants. All right? So, when you're doing pruning, you need a pruning shear. Very clean, sterile. I will start with a bad way. People come and just cut. Anywhere, all right? They cut them. Most plantations have gone to. This is what they do. All right? They cut and leave the tree looking very ugly. See this? They cut and leave the tree looking very ugly. If this is how your tree looks like, this is very bad. In forestry, this tree will grow. And this branch, because it is alive, will create what we call dead knots on your timber. When I harvest timber from this tree in future, there will be dead knots. Dead knots are those rings you see around a piece of timber. When you push your finger through it, it falls off. All right? No one is going to take timber where that part where there was a branch easily falls off. So it will not make very good furniture. Even when the people buying them for electricity transmission come, they will assess your log, your tree. If they see there are so many dead knots, they will disqualify that, that tree from electricity transmission. They want something that was properly managed. Okay? This is not right in the management of these branches. All right? Also, eucalyptus drops its own what? Leaves and branches as it is growing. We call that self-pruning. But there are situations when you are required to come and do active pruning. That is when you come with your pruning shear and do it the professional way. So now I'm going to demonstrate how we do it the professional way. So when you come, you hold the pruning shear and make sure that each time you're cutting off the branch, the back of your palm should be against the tree stem. And you do a flash cut, okay? Don't leave any protrusions, right? See that? Always, you go and rotate, okay? You rotate. You must flush. See this? It is flushing. When the tree continues growing, this bark will grow over this point. All right? And then cover it. And as it grows, it will make this point part of the timber. So when you cut the timber in future, you will not see that this, this place had a branch. All right? So you must do real flush using the right tool. All right? using the right tool. See that? Right? Okay. You go round. Alright? Flash. Clean cut. 
right? Always at the back. Some are hard, but you do the right thing. Don't do this. Because when you do this, there is a nail here. It can't rest completely against. So when I do that, it will remain. Okay? But if I go round and do it the other way, I'll get it right. You see? When I do it the wrong way, there's always a piece that remains. Okay? So you must do it the right way. Right, the right way. This is beautiful. Not so? This is beautiful. As it continues growing, you will not need to remove others on top. They will drop on their own. But these ones at the bottom really need to be removed. Okay? Now, we are going to demonstrate using two lines. First, we are showing you how ugly it is before we do any pruning. At the end of the video, you will see how it looks very smart and beautiful after the exercise is done. Make sure you get the right tool for the trade. This is a pruning shear. I bought it. It's made in France. A brand new one costs about a hundred thousand, but you can use it up to ten years. You are a tree grower, meaning that you are going, you are doing the business for the next fifty years. So don't mind about the expense. Mind about the quality of the work. All right? They are readily available in town. So let's uh, start the exercise. You do it up to around two thirds. Up to around a, a human's heart, their height. Just that, where you don't have problems raising your hands, all right? All right. This should be slightly higher, but if you're taller, you can reach there. struggle with it. All right. This is our tree number two. I'm going to do the thinning ex uh, pruning exercise. Make sure the plantation is clean, right? Where we are picking from, we've done it deliberately to show you that it is, it is not healthy and it is not safe to do pruning where there is a bush. First ensure that you have done the slashing. And eucalyptus is a monocrop. You don't need to intercrop it with anything else. You'll see some cassava in the background. That is wrong. Maybe that's a survival instinct. But in soils which do not support cassava, you'll be wasting your, your, your money. And also attracting thieves to your plantation. When they take the trees, you are to blame yourself. This is tree number three. Quite a fast exercise. Done preferably early in the morning or late in the evening. Early in the morning or late in the evening. Good. Always the back, the thumb always facing. Right. Some of you, see this, some of you have planted these trees and there is always a big branch at the bottom of the tree. It is big, almost bigger than the size of my thumb. That one you are required to get a, a pruning saw or a sickle that most people use for coffee. You make an incision from the bottom first, then you cut from the top. Why do we start with the bottom? You don't want the branch to tear the skin. Okay? 
of the tree as you're removing it because when you tear the skin you're giving a wound which will attract fungi and bacteria to grow and it could put the health of the tree in jeopardy to tell the community when they are passing your plantation not to get a panga as they are passing and cut the branches as they wish all right they should respect your plantation because they are damaging your plantation if they cut with the pangas they pass by another thing why people remove these branches poorly is because they have put an intercrop you have planted your trees you have come back to kampala you have given a caretaker he has put their potatoes he has put their maybe cassava he has put their green pepper he has put their tomatoes and the canopy of the trees is starting to close and is chasing him away what does he do he wants to create more light for his crops so he will come and do it very poorly, like I was saying, very poorly, so that he gets more light. No, after one season of intercrop, he should be able to live so that your trees grow comfortably. So it also comes down to the person you've left to manage the place. All right. Comes down to the person. When these clones were brought in 2002, the spacing given to us by the South Africans was 2 meters, 0.5, from one tree to the other, along the row and the column. However, when they came to assess these trees, they were very impressed with the growth of these trees and told us, while we were still in narrow, that please adjust the spacing to 3 meters. 2.5 was cheating these trees. However, I have noticed some people, when they are establishing their plantations, putting at even 4 meters. That is wrong. Why is it wrong? At 3 meters spacing, these trees are supposed to compete for light. As they compete for light, they are getting the height required. At 2 years and a half, 3 years and a half, we will come and reduce the trees from 450 in an acre to 288. There is a formula we use. That's why I'm very precise with my figures. If you widen the spaces between these trees, this is what is going to happen. The tree will be so big at the bottom and then towards the middle, it starts tapering like a cone. But when it is three meters, it is straight and cylindrical. When you come to cut down that tree for electricity transmission six, seven, nine years later, the people who are assessing your plantation will look at how cylindrical your tree is. If it is cylindrical, the same size from the bottom and the same size at the top, they will mark it as a plus tree for electrical transmission. You look at your homesteads. Look at the power lines coming to your homes. Have you seen them small at the top? They are the same size at the bottom. Those are the parameters they are using to qualify a tree for transmission. So if you widen the space, you have a very big tree, trunk, but very small at the top. They will not qualify that tree for transmission. Now, when we thin further at six years and remain with 150 trees, when the, 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 the logger comes to cut down that tree for timber. The one of three meters, we will cut, we will size those logs at every 12 feet, they get a log. Every 12 feet, they get a log. Every 12 feet, they get a log. Now, at three meters, your tree can give you up to six logs. If you widen it, you'll end up getting about four logs. So you are losing eventually. The part that has become so small gives you less pieces of timber. 
if you're cutting 9 by 1, 2 by 4, 6 by 2, 4 by 2, 8 by 2, you are going to harvest more from the bottom and less from the top. But if you had stuck to the science of 3 meters, you'll get very many logs. What the Musala Mala calls endodo. You get more, all right? And also another reason why when you go to these timber yards and you tell them, I want a piece of timber of 12 feet, they'll tell you, Tetuina, we don't have. Why? Because they are trying to maximize this log. They will start cutting at 10. All right? He wants to get more pieces out of it. But if you had stuck to your 3 meter and you've got your 6 logs, you can afford to make 12 feet. And you will fetch a higher price when the time comes. So please insist on 3 meters. It is painful when we are thinning. Okay? Look at this plantation. If I am come and remove for every 16 trees to remove 6, the owner of the plantation will cry and say, but Mr. Ogwal, they are all looking very nice. Yes, thank you so much for maintaining a good plantation. But we must remove six so that the others get a chance to grow big and cylindrical up to the top. Um, I am going to give a, a theoretical explanation of the thinning process. When we are establishing a forest plantation, we use a spacing of 3 meters by 3. Uh, in an acre, you are able to plant 450 trees. You manage your trees very well, manage the weeds. When they are two and a half years old, you call a forester and tell him, I want to thin my plantation. How should he do it? The forester should be able to explain to you the following. So you stand on a tree like this one, do this. You'll count four trees away from my left hand and count four trees away from my right hand. He goes to the other fourth tree and counts another four up. He goes to the other tree and counts another four so that we have four by four row and column giving us a total of 16 trees. From those 16 trees, you are required as a forester to mark six trees to be removed from that plot. How do we choose the six trees? You look for disease. You look for straightness. There are trees which have a sweep. You look at the canopy up. If they are touching, you have to remove one of them. Then you look for size. They are smaller ones. Those ones are the ones to be removed. Those criteria are the ones we use to remove the six trees. Now the dilemma is one. When all the trees are good. When all the trees are good, I thank the farmer for managing the plantation very well. But I also thank him. I thank him for going to the right nursery and picking the right seedlings. That means you picked the right planting material. You are not sold branches, but you are sold a proper coppiced what? seedling. It is a very painful exercise. We normally don't do it with the owners around because back Avenue they cry and say, but Mr. Gual, all the trees are good, which one are I going to remove? But you have to bite the bullet and remove those six trees. Otherwise the trees will not gain volume. Like I said earlier, before you do pruning, or even cleaning, you have to maintain a very clean garden. First of all, the weeds are also competing for nutrients with the trees. So you're trying to reduce competition. And then, in case there are snakes that would have caused harm to the workers, you avoid that by slashing. You slash up to down a clean garden. It is your investment. Give it the best. And try as much as possible to be there. Okay. Part of Kibuga, part of Tampuangi. I had in Kamuja, it is a block. That's what they got the rain, Hey!